Ta-Nehisi Coates is a national correspondent for The Atlantic Magazine. In his article, The Black Family in the Age of Mass Incarceration, he speaks to the reality of racial violence and injustice and the ways that America is responsible for what has happened to the black family. In addition, he raises concerns about the Monaghan Report under the Lyndon B. Johnson's administration. Today, our guests will look at the reality of Ta-Nehisi Coates' claims and look at what it means for our today. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Perspectives on Faith and Culture. I'm Dr. Karen Crozier, and today I'm joined by Dr. Hassan Johnson, a chair of Africana Studies professor at Fresno State, and Dr. Matthew Jindian, who is chair of sociology at Fresno State. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So when we look at what uh, Ta-Nehisi does in recovering Monaghan's report, which was the Negro family, mm -hmm. the case for national action, it was highly controversial in his day. Mm -hmm. So what do you think as professors from your perspective, what do you agree with or have concerns about what ta Coast raises? We could begin with you, Matt. Sure. So I, I like the fact that, uh, that he is bringing this report back up because it, as you said, it, is, it was a controversial report at the time. I think it was getting at some of the attention that was crying out for policy that would assist um, a variety of populations, but specifically African-American and African-American families of that time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think there's some aspects of the report that can be twisted and can be then seen as causal factors rather than resulting from other contextual factors that are going on to bring about some of the negative statistics associated with those populations. So, I like the attention. I think I, I, I'm always an optimist, so I try to get the best out of every situation. And I'm hoping that the conversation can be this time spun in a direction that cries out for the attention that many portions of our, our society need. Right, and the view and audience possibly saw that it was written in 1965. So we're nearly uh, 40 plus years beyond that. 50 years, right? Yeah. <laughs> 50 years. 50 years plus beyond that report where you have a white male who was part of the administration wanting to say, said that the government needs to take action. And from your perspective, as, uh, Dr. Johnson, as an Africana studies, share with us what were some of your concerns as you looked at the article by ta well, um, I appreciated that he was doing it, uh, mainly because in this social media era, it seems like there's a, a, a missing component when it comes to history and how things contribute to the current moment. So I appreciated that he brought it back up and, and, and really tried to give it more depth because I think since 1965, Moynihan has dealt with in a very shorthand fashion and it, be, it gets reduced to an attack on African-American women in the black community mm -hmm. and this kind of advocation for patriarchy. Um, and I think there's more to it. There's a little more nuance that even Moynihan it contributes to it. But more than that, um, what's happened since gives this piece an incredible amount of depth. And, and I, again, applaud him for bringing it back up. The incarceration issue has just gone, has, has really exploded, particularly since 1965. And it's interesting to ponder that uh, based on the time he wrote it, because it's about a decade later that we see an explosion in incarceration and massive unemployment that affects blue collar people across the board, but particularly African Americans who 30 years prior are migrating to these northern cities to get away from sharecropping and, you know, convict leasing in the south. 
who run square into it, lose their jobs to soldiers coming back from World War II, and really spend all of that time looking, scraping for some kind of work. And so the impact of it is tremendous. And by the time you get to the mid-1970s, it's the, the poverty level is ridiculous, and it starts to flower from there. And unfortunately, it continues on to this day. Yes, and I think I agree with you. That is the beauty of what ta does, of looking at it from a historical context and how it impacts our present and how do we resurrect what Monaghan was really trying to get at mm. in 1965 that is still with us in the 21st century. Dr. Jindine, you had shared about the difference between causal and conditions. You know, our viewing audience may not know what you're referring to as a sociologist as you mm -hmm. talk about cause and conditions. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more yeah, on please. that as you look at the uh, Tanahasi's claims? So I, I think uh, some of the things that got misinterpreted uh, from, the, from the early report of Moynihan that continue to be misinterpreted when we talk about social problems today is people attributing individual level explanations for behaviors and things that have a much deeper root. And, and so we can't talk about, we, can, we need to acknowledge right, certain situations that may make certain behaviors more likely to occur. So um, not having graduated from high school, being from a single parent household, right? We know these are correlated mm -hmm. with social problems like crime and delinquency, but they don't necessarily cause them. Mm -hmm. And we must look at what are the causal factors that lead to people not graduating from high school, that lead to families being broken up and not able to earn enough money to, to a shelter and care for their children. That, that's, that's the difference between the causal and the correlational. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, uh, even Moynihan, I think, misattributed mis some citations that he had to Franklin Frazier's report about, about the black family and, um, and, and treated it more as a causal. I think given his own family experience and background, mm -hmm. saw that as more of a causal thing. And, and it really does need to be looked at in the context of our society and the policies that don't support families. All families in general, black families and families of color in particular. And this is why we're at a political moment where policy can make a, a big difference. When you talk about the conditions, I see ta raising the point that Monaghan said it was due to the government's lack of action to the history and legacy of slavery, dis discrimination, and other forms of racial violence and injustice. And he also says it's not just the government's responsibility, but it's also a white racist society that the black family found itself in in this country. And in the 1960s, mid 60s, where you have civil rights acts being passed, Monaghan, as I understand Coase is saying, that will not be sufficient. What do you think about his conditions analysis, right? That the history of slavery the government's lack of action, and the a white racist society as being the conditions that have created this. Dr. Johnson? Well, I, I think he was right, but I also think he was uh, misunderstood, and that, <clears throat> that got buried. Mm -hmm. You know, people generally don't remember that he, he suggested that there needed to be culpability, there needed to be responsibility on behalf of the state. It just became about what, you know, as, as Dr. Jindian pointed out, what black families were doing to themselves, and that became the narrative. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of nuance to, in, in that critique that it needed to be addressed, and unfortunately, um, policy did come about to try and address it, or if we could use the word try, but the problem was the policies were wrong. So there were policies that heightened incarceration, policies that, that you know, misapplied to black families, punished families with two parents, particularly families with a male in the home, you know, punishment to the extent that they withdrew support in many ways, and that further fragmented matters. I mean, I've had students in my class for the last two decades tell me stories about their parents negotiating living apart just to receive aid from the state. And what does that do two generations later? So even if you have two pe people who aren't willing to divorce because they do love each other, but trying to separate in the, you know, for the best interest of the family, those kind of issues um, aren't really, they, they were responding in many ways in a problematic way 
to the issues that Moynihan brings about. And, and we still haven't grappled with the, the impact of that. What does that mean? So we're living in a situation now where up, up to a couple of years ago, there were over almost 900,000 black males incarcerated. Um, that has a tremendous impact on the black family. So it's, it's a weird dynamic because in one vein, we do want to challenge the patriarchal argument that Moynihan kind of imposes by suggesting if we employ black men, this will resolve the issue because it restores the family. There is a problem in that analysis, but he's not entirely wrong about the matter because you can't take uh, you know, half the community and allow them to be unemployed and incarcerated and then suggest it won't have an impact on the family. You know, so there's some nuances there that need to be teased out. And in fact, the, the, the crime policies that were passed that increased incarceration rates mm -hmm. have, according to many scholars, become criminogenic in themselves, mm -hmm. producing situations for families and communities that create conditions that would produce more crime. Mm -hmm. And so while nationally today we have about one in 40 children that have a parent in prison, among black families that's one in 15, right? These, those conditions lead to lack of supervision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, right, what the color of that person's skin is, the situation, right, creates it. And that's what I think we're, we're, we're missing. You can have the Voting Rights Act you can have social justice policy and acts, but if they're not complemented with economic justice mm -hmm. and economic policies, those conditions that lead to more delinquent criminal behavior all become an ongoing problem. Right, and that's what I hear Dr. Johnson raising as mm -hmm. far as, yes, it was government and it was white society, but it was also the economic, and the economic was still not sufficient mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're looking at the broader conditions that have created this. And even though he was coming with the vision, employed the black father, mm -hmm. you're saying it was still inadequate. So what more would need to be done if Moynihan was taken seriously in his solution in a more comprehensive way? So two things, one, later on in Moynihan's career, I'm trying to remember when exactly it was, there were a couple of things that he, he did more on the economic side. One was expanding SSI. Mm -hmm. Another one was the earned income tax credit, mm -hmm. right, which helps lots of families, uh, working families, uh, particularly families of color, that uh, get, get to a certain level of income. Um, but those, were, those are more Band-Aid approaches they're they're not dealing and it's not dealing with the employment side of the question it's not dealing with the wage justice issue the the crisis of and in the context of the of declining unions mm -hmm. right which we've seen we've seen these issues around wages around um, insurance and benefits also be problematic for for working mem uh, working Americans across the board so but those are really where it needs to happen, and that's not going to happen unless you have people coming together across racial lines, across class lines, to advance an economic agenda that works for the majority of Americans and not for the few. We're going to have to take a break. I know you're ready to get back in this. <laughs> and we will come to you, Dr. Johnson, after the break for you to pick up on your response to the question. See you in 60 seconds. Perspectives on Faith and Culture, and today we're discussing ta Coates' 
uh, the black family in the age of mass incarceration, joined by Dr. Johnson and Dr. Jindian. Before the break, we were dealing with the reality of this massive problem at the government level, as well as an attitude within white racist culture and Monaghan's vision of our solution, the economics, but the economics in of itself is not sufficient. You